I would like to say that the sheer presence of the key officers of INEC, led by the chairman, the presence of His uh, Royal Majesty, and the presence of all of us here who represent the larger Nigerian society suggests that we really and truly do take this symbolic commitment to democracy very seriously. The signing of this accord, the National Peace Accord, uh, is something that I think we focus more on its symbolic gesture. But I think that many of us, as you hear from the text itself, that the focus has been on ensuring free, fair, non-violent elections. But I think the second phase, which we need to begin to interrogate and talk to, is beyond just having a peaceful election. That Nigerians desperately are in need of a peaceful environment around which to function. We might as well begin to think and encourage our political actors to think, because this is the last off-cycle election we are having, so we've had enough time to practice. Let me put it that way. Preparatory to the 2023 elections, we need to begin to pose certain questions. That is commitment to peaceful governance. Because the harvest that we have had, the very rich harvest of the lives that have been lost and are still being lost, the amount of violence that has engulfed our nation in a democracy, in a country that is not at war, this, for me, is the fundamental threat to our democracy. And those who run the system must demonstrate commitment, capacity to arrest this threat. And the point is that ordinary Nigerians are in very many respects, perhaps even more deeply committed to democracy and democratic processes than the key actors themselves. So for me, I think it's important to call attention and to appreciate that INEC is here. INEC remains the umpire. INEC is a midwife, and the midwife doesn't take the baby home. So civil society groups, church groups, traditional institutions, we heard about the presence of Christians and Muslim leaders here. We're also aware of the support from traditional, I mean, for international agencies, donor agencies. We also are not unaware of the fact that our women, our children, our young people have always consistently and persistently shown their commitment to democracy, not only by coming out to vote, but also by braving some of the ugly elements, including rain and bad weather and so on. We cannot find a better explanation for our people's commitment to democracy. Therefore, we are not unaware of the fact that, as one of the campaign slogans said, you want to win from top to bottom. But the experience of ordinary Nigerians is that after winning from top to bottom, it is the top that seems to benefit. And this speaks to the need and the urgency of political actors to begin to focus on ensuring a much broader spectrum of opportunities available to our people. Because the persistence of violence in Nigeria is directly correlated to the tragic situations around which our people find themselves. The bottom of Nigeria is characterized by we, the ordinary people, who make up over 90% of the population. Our lives today are characterized by hunger. People are, our people are angry. People are dying. People are sick, children are out of school, and we might as well even add that when we used to talk of out of school children, we're talking about 8 million or 10 million children out of school. Well, for us in Nigeria, the university students who count in millions can be classified as out of school children. This is unacceptable, especially, as I said, as these things are happening in a democracy. Because democracy has always given us an opportunity for negotiation, consensus, and so on. And it is a tragedy. The chairman of INEC is himself a professor. A lot of the election results are being released by, announced by professors. It is therefore not acceptable 
that after so many months, our universities are still closed. Because we must understand that without the universities giving opportunities for academic energy and analysis and theorizing, it's impossible for our democracy to grow. So the most important thing, therefore, for political actors, and I'm speaking not only for the people of Oshun, I'm also speaking to the political actors in Nigeria, that it is time for us to take our responsibilities sufficiently seriously. We must therefore try to make democracy work. Essentially, the frustration of ordinary Nigerians, the chairman and I were just talking about voter apathy, which civil society has been battling, the churches have been battling, the mosques, we're all encouraging everybody to go out and register. But it is understandable, even if, and even if not acceptable, why Nigerians do not feel enthusiastic. Because there isn't enough traffic coming from the other side to reward them for their pain, their sufferings, and their sacrifices. Increasingly, we are witnessing our democracy moving from a democracy to a plutocracy. The sheer amount of money that has been spent not only in campaign, by just picking up a piece of paper to declare intention to participate, these things are not acceptable because majority of our people remain hungry and sick and we cannot be flaunting this wealth in a democracy. Because if that is the system we wanted, we will call it a plutocracy, in which case only rich men and rich women can participate in the process. So while we are signing this accord, we are also encouraging the political actors, and I'm speaking to you, there is need to expand the frontiers of our freedom to participate in the processes concerning our country. So I want to end by saying two or three things. The first is the urgency of fixing our nation. And this is tied to the process we've chosen. I therefore want to still continue to call on Nigerians. Let's go out and vote. I mean, let's go out and register because this is a civic duty that we must perform. And I think we're quite happy that somehow by a twist of faith, there is quite a lot of energy that is being expressed. We therefore want to salute and encourage INEC uh, for its eloquent uh, transparency and then its ability to engage our brothers and our sisters. That I'm happy because a lot of the things happening in INEC, we're all very delighted by the quality of manpower you know, that some members of civil society who were fighting a few years back are now part and parcel of solving our problems. So, whereas INEC can provide the level playing field, in the final analysis, it is the conduct and behavior of the players that determines how this game is going to be played. So please, for you, the members of the political class, in the name of the Peace Committee, I want to appeal to you we love our country, we love our democracy, but please, politicians in Nigeria, we beg you, make it possible for us to trust you. Make it possible for us to love you. Make it possible for us to, to, to show that by choosing democracy, we have chosen, to, we have chosen to stay alive. Because finally, as they say, the democratization of, de of development leads to the development of democracy. Okay, I repeat that. The democratization of development leads to the development of democracy. That is, if we, de if we democratize the opportunities that are available to the widest number of our citizens, then our people will become enthusiastic to go out and vote. But if they vote and they think that we have voted only for a select group of people to enjoy on our behalf, it will be difficult to convince our people. So once again, I want to call on the people of Oshun as you go out, Please make sure that you vote to stay alive. There are growing concerns about giving out money. Civil society has talked about this. I've seen women commenting about this with a lot of pain and concern. But the political class must be the ones to show a sign and a signal that honor, integrity cannot be substituted by money. Because the monetization of our political process is largely destroying the foundation of our common existence. So once again, I want to thank you on behalf of the members, the chairman and members of the Peace Committee, and hope and pray that these elections uh, will go freely and that they will be honest and that they will be free and that they will be fair and that they will be credible. Because nobody that is standing election here comes from a kitty. Everybody you are going to vote for is a son of Oshun. So win or lose, 
it is still a family business. May God bless you and may God bless the people of Oshun and may God bless our country, Nigeria. Thank you very much.